Hey guys, I hope that I'm live right now. If you guys are able to listen to me properly, as well as there's no issues with the audio or the video, please do let me know. Guys, if there is any issues with the audio or the video, please do let me know, guys. Hello everyone, I hope that I'm live right now. If you guys are facing any issues with the audio or the video, please do let me know. No problem, all okay. Okay, great, amazing guys, amazing. So, uh, many of you might be coming for a particular boot camp for the very first time. So we will be discussing about everything. Don't worry about it. Okay, don't spam the live chat, guys. Like I said, those who are writing present sir in the live chat, we are recording all their names. Every single name that is there in the live chat, we are recording all their names and all those students won't be given any certificates. So please make sure that if you are writing something in the live chat, it is of importance. Otherwise, you attending this bootcamp will have no uh, thing, nothing like you won't be benefited from this bootcamp because you won't be able to get the certificates via us or Google or Microsoft. Okay, so please don't spam the chats, guys. Okay, so I guess most of the students coming in this particular boot camp uh, do not know how to read. So, okay, no issues in that as well. Um, okay, one of the prerequisites for this boot camp is you should be able to understand English. So, if you are able to understand English, please do not spam the live chat, guys. Okay, please do not spam the live chat, guys. So am I audible to everyone? Please do let me know. If there is any issues with the audio or the video guys, please do let me know. In the meanwhile, I'm opening up the live chat on my phone as well so that I'm able to see your uh, chats when you stop writing the same. <laughs> Okay, so I've opened up the live chat as well on my phone, guys. Okay. So please do not spam the live chat, guys. Please do not spam the live chat. Those who are writing present, so we are recording their names. You guys will not be able to get the certificates. Okay, you guys will not be able to get the certificates, guys. Please do not spam the live chat. Please do not spam the live chat guys. These students who are writing will not be able to receive these certificates. Okay, so shall we start off with our today's class guys? Please do let me know. Can you let me know how many of you are coming for the very first time uh, at a boot camp that has been conducted by DevTown? How many of you guys are coming up for the very first time for a boot camp that has been conducted by DevTown guys? Do let me know. How many of you guys are coming for the very first time by DevTown conducted a uh, boot camp conducted by DevTown guys? Please let me know. How many of you are coming for the very first time for a boot camp conducted by DevTown guys? Okay, so as I'm able to see, many of you are coming up uh, for the very first time to this bootcamp. It's great to meet you guys right over here. Okay, I will give you guys a quick intro about myself. My name is Shaurya Sinha and I have worked as a data analyst, as a data scientist, as a machine learning engineer, as a software engineer, as well as a full stack engineer in companies like Reliance, Jio, uh, Fastenal and other companies as well. 
currently uh, i am also a software engineer as well so right now we have started off with devtown a non profit organization that dedicates its time and resources to be able to teach students about different technologies whether it be in data science whether it be in full stack whether it be in blockchain cyber security and other technologies as well give them a good introduction to them okay and uh, bring them closer to that technology and how that technology actually works okay so that is the aim of devtown we organize these seven day uh, boot camps that are conducted right over here and these boot camps are conducted there are no cost associated with these boot camps this is a seven day boot camp that is for free there is no cost associated with these boot camps okay this is a seven days free boot camp that we are conducting right now and uh, there will be no cost associated with this boot camp this boot camp is brought to you in collaboration with microsoft and google so you will be getting certificates by devtown you will be getting certificates by microsoft you will also be getting certificates by google at the end of this dev uh, seven day boot camp okay the only prerequisite okay the only prerequisite for these boot camps is that you should be able to understand english that is the only prerequisite for these boot camps that is you should be able to understand english the rest that is the programming language okay the concepts the projects everything will be taught to you from scratch that is from the utmost basics in the class itself so that you don't have to worry about it are you guys able to understand this please let me know are you guys able to understand what i am saying please let me know guys are you guys able to understand this please let me know If you guys are able to understand right yes in the live chat guys okay great so in the next 7 days we are going to learn python we are going to learn a bit about numpy a bit upon uh, pandas a bit about matplotlib and cborn we will be going through the exploratory data analysis of a data set okay in data science okay we'll first try to understand what is data science what is exploratory data analysis what are the components of exploratory data analysis okay that is what we'll be doing today then we'll be going further with python we'll try to understand python then we'll be going towards again numpy pandas matplotlib cborn we will be understanding all these concepts from scratch from the utmost basics you don't need to know anything from the start okay after that on the last day of the boot camp on the last day of the boot camp we'll be having our project as well okay we will be doing our projects as well so on the last day of the boot camp we'll be having a project in which we will be uh, working upon a proper data exploratory analysis project which you can put up on your resume as well at the end of the program you will be getting three certificates one will be issued by devtown the other one will be issued by google developer groups that is google and the third one will be issued to you by microsoft student learn ambassador program that is microsoft so you will be getting three certificates at the end of the program as well so don't worry about it how to give the attendance i will be letting you guys know at the end of today's class not right now how to give the attendance how the attendance will be taken place how we will get the certificates everything will be given to you at the end of today's class not right now right now we will start off with the class we'll start off with the learning process okay where the where how you have to give the attendance how you have to do everything okay you have to give it at the end okay i, I will be telling you guys at the end of the class itself at the end of today's class right now we'll start off with our today's class are you guys ready should we start off with our today's class guys please do let me know should we start off with our today's class guys please do let me know awesome so we will start off with our today's class guys today our aim is to understand about ai to understand about data science to understand about exploratory data analysis okay so that will be our topic for today we will try to understand as much as possible okay and then once we have understood everything then i will be letting you guys know how to give the attendance and uh, how the certificates will be sent to you and everything else as well at the end of the class not right now how to mark the attendance how the attendance will be taking place how certificates will be given what are the criteria for the certificate 
updates will be told to you at the end of the class right now let's focus upon the class itself okay great amazing guys amazing So right over here, let's first start with understanding about artificial intelligence. So what do you understand by AI? What is your understanding? Like if I'm telling not from a computer science perspective, not a bookish knowledge. If anybody is asking you live right now, what do you understand by AI or artificial intelligence? What would you say? Okay. What would you say guys? Please let me know. What would you say that if I'm asking you, what do you understand by AI? Okay, what is your thought related to AI? What would you say? Write it down in the live chat, guys. Write it down in the live chat so that I'm able to understand what is your thought process. Try to be as interactive as possible, guys. Okay. Uh, making a computer intelligent, set of else if statements, good computer dimag. Okay, great. Uh, brains of computer, machine learning, data analysis using machine learning. Again, very uh, going in a very long direction. Automation, okay. Automatic. Intelligence created by humans, okay. Thinking itself, human like behavior, smart intelligence, technology, uh, okay. So, are you as you're able to see from the live chat, there's a lot of like robots, uh, automation, human intelligence, and this is what usually people understand by AI as well. But actually, AI is nothing else but mathematical algorithms, it's nothing else but maths. Okay, so if you are really studying about AI, so I've been working in AI for the past uh, four years. So right now I can say you guys that AI is nothing else but maths. Okay, it's just algorithms. It's nothing that you're talking about. It's just algorithms. It is using algorithms and mathematics that you are able to predict something, that you are able to do something that may appear to be intelligent, that may appear to be human-like. But at the end of the day, it's just mathematics. And, uh, okay, so that is what like AI is. Now, one of the domains that... So AI is like we don't need to concern ourselves with AI. Our topic of discussion is data science. Our topic of data discussion is data science. So what do you understand by data science? Okay, this word can be divided into two different parts, data and science. The science behind understanding data, like gaining knowledge of the data, like understanding the data itself is called as data science. Now, whenever you are using a mobile phone, okay, or you are using a laptop, you are using so many devices at any point of time. It's you're continuously generating data, whether it be using Bluetooth, whether it be your Wi-Fi, it will be your GPS location, whether it be your history, whether it be the apps that you're using, whether it be the uh, videos that you're watching, the music that you're listening. So you're continuously a single person every single day is generating two to three terabytes of data. 2 to 3 terabytes of data just via his mobile phone. Just via his mobile phone. Now, the companies like Google, companies like Apple, companies like, like uh, maybe other companies as well, Facebook, are taking this data in. All this data that you're generating every single day, they're taking this data in. They're trying to analyze that data. They are trying to analyze that data and then implement stuff for you. Maybe it's the recommendations that you're getting, the ads that you're getting on YouTube, the posts and feeds that you're getting on Instagram, which particular friend's photo that you should be shown. Okay, so all these different things that these companies are working upon. So how are they able to understand? If I'm talking right now about Apple, I will start getting uh, like ads on youtube and instagram of apple itself how do they know i won't search for it i was just talking about apple right over here okay if you will immediately start getting apple ads how are these companies able to understand that and that is where the process of data science comes in the data that you are generating the data that you are generating every single second of your life the data that you are generating every single second of your life these companies are collecting that data they are filtering that data they are cleaning that data up and then they are trying to analyze that data they are trying to analyze that data and based on those analysis they are able to make some predictions and based on those predictions you are getting the ads you are getting the enhancement the features uh, Siri is able to recognize your voice all that is based upon only one topic that is data science they first analyze it and then they predict it 
Now for analysis of the data, you have something called as EDA or exploratory data analysis. Okay, it is all EDA or exploratory data analysis where you use statistics, where you use numbers, where you use graphs, where you use uh, different types of uh, images. Okay, uh, analysis that you are able to do and understand again okay, knowledge from the data itself to understand the data. Okay, you need, so you are having a data itself, you are having data of how many times you are opening up a particular or which particular videos that you are liking, which particular videos that you are watching on Netflix. So Netflix is getting all this data from all its users and is trying to analyze that data. It will see that, okay, the trends for Bhul Bulaya 2 or maybe for Bad Boys for Life that have been released right now on Netflix is increasing. People are watching that. So let's promote that. Let's let's try to put up some reels on Instagram, some, um, uh, let's get some influencers to promote this particular uh, squid game for us and let's make the hype for this particular thing so that we are able to generate more revenue so all that they were able to do they were able to implement from doing EDA or exploratory data analysis and that is what we are here to discuss about we are here to discuss about the data analysis process okay we are here to discuss about the data analysis process so that you will be able to do using statistics and data visualization okay so you will be starting off with Python okay you will be starting off with python that is the language that you will be using inside of this entire bootcamp of course we will be learning python guys don't worry about it we will be learning python okay the next thing that you will be learning after that is numpy and pandas to be able to use the data okay to be able to use the data itself okay you will be able to learn uh, pandas sorry not numpy you will be learning pandas right over here not numpy numpy is not something that we'll be using so you will be use, use learning pandas after that but that is one of the libraries of python that basically helps you guys to deal with your data uh, data sets okay you are having so much data present that has been stored inside of data sets itself guys please listen to me very carefully if you are missing on a single point you won't be able to understand anything and for the certificates you need to understand every single thing so whatever i'm speaking whatever i'm telling you guys try to listen to it very carefully do not use the live chat do not use the live chat until and unless you have a question do not use the live chat until Till and unless you have a question okay please do not use the live chat focus upon what i'm teaching guys otherwise you will not be able to get these certificates okay you will not be able to get these certificates guys we are noting down every single name every single name that is writing here right over here present sir in the live chat we are noting down every single name none of them are going to get these certificates i'm telling you guys right now itself none of them is going to get these certificates Please focus upon what I'm teaching right over here. Please focus upon what I'm teaching right over here, guys. These people who are writing presents, sir, they have no work. They are not here to learn. They are here to just like just try to like not let you learn okay they that is their job. So don't focus upon them. Try to understand as much as possible, guys. Okay. Try to understand as much as possible. Okay. So pandas is basically used to deal with data sets. So all the data that you are currently generating, okay, all the data that you are currently generating right now that is being saved inside of formats like CSV or inside a database in formats of called as data sets. Okay, these are the data that you will be using that will be using to analyze and pandas help you guys. That is a library that pandas help you guys to like do stuff with that data. Okay, after learning pandas, you'll be using matplotlib and seaborn to be able to visualize the data that is to be able to make graphs and all those kind of stuff there we'll be using matplotlib and seaborn so this is all that we are going to learn in this bootcamp once we have learned all these concepts then we will be making a project at the very end then we'll be making a project at the very end so shall we start off with learning python guys shall we start off with learning python guys please do let me know Should I start off with Python guys? Please do let me know.
Okay, great. So let's move on from right over here. So I am able to understand that most of you might not be able to have a laptop or a desktop to work off of. Okay, but please try to understand that practice is the key to success. Whatever I'm teaching to you guys, okay, whatever I'm teaching to you guys, you need to understand that Python, okay, any type of language, any type of technology that you're learning, you need to practice that, okay. I'm able to understand that most of you might not be able to have a laptop or a desktop for that reason then we will be using collab we will be using collab for writing our code okay now you can use you can do the entire bootcamp even the project just from your mobile phone you can do the entire program and the project just via your mobile phone as well okay so i've made the entire program in such a way that you don't have to worry about it Okay, so let's now try to understand what is Google Collab. Okay, so Google Collab. So basically what happens in data science, especially in data science, it deals with a lot of matrices. Okay, matrices and matrices, um, addition, subtraction, multiplication and all those kind of stuff. So it is very computing, like it is very graphic intensive. Like it uses a lot of computational power from your own laptop or your desktop. Okay, so it will use a lot of CPU, it will use a lot of RAM, it will use a lot of GPU and usually you don't have that kind of laptop. Now just taking upon an example, I've already lost, I've already lost one of my laptops. So I had a laptop that was the HP Pavilion X360 and that had the i7 10th generation processor with 12 gigs of RAM that I increased to 16 gigs. It has 16 gigs of RAM, the i7 10th generation processor. It had the best, uh, like it had, the GPU was not that great. It was like, I think so, uh, GeForce GPU, okay. So I have lost that entire laptop because of running data science operations right over there. My entire, entire motherboard got burnt. Okay, so you are able to understand how graphic intensive these uh, data science programs are. And due to that, uh, and not everybody has the best quality of laptop or the best CPUs or GPUs available with them. So Google wanted to make sure that everybody around the world is able to learn and practice data science topics very easily. And for that, they created Google Collaboratory. Now, Google has a lot main number of servers. Servers are like computers. Okay, servers are like computers. Uh, you must, must have seen these type of images. you must have seen some type of images like these okay these are like data centers these are called as data centers right over here so these are nothing else but servers these are computers rows and rows of computers and google has the best quality of servers throughout the entire world okay these servers have the like latest uh, intel processors latest amd processors like 64 gigs of ram they would have like 128 gigs of ram they would have like tesla gpu okay that is like a 6 lakh rupees gpu each of these servers has a 6 lakh rupees gpu okay so you are able to understand what are the like computational powers and the quality of these servers and google has a lot many number of these servers throughout the entire world google has these type of servers throughout the entire world now not all of these servers are getting used at all times so for that what google has done is it has allotted okay it has made this particular application called as google collaboratory okay with for example let me create a new notebook okay let me create a new notebook from right away here okay it is just opening it up so give me give it a second or two okay So right over here, if I'm clicking on connect, okay, if I'm clicking on connect right over here, it will connect me. It is allocating me some of the resources, some of the servers from the Google uh, like data centers itself. It is connecting it to me. It will initialize it to me. Okay. Now what is happening is instead of running your code on your own laptop, so when you're running your code on your own laptop, it is using your computer's CPU, your computer's GPU and your computer's RAM. Okay. So what is happening right over here is you are writing your code in a browser. So what your computer is utilizing what your computer is giving out as resources is to just google chrome whatever a normal google chrome is using as the resource only that much resource is being utilized right over here okay whatever code that you're typing so right now i'm right here typing print hello world
ओके आई एम टाइपिंग राइट ओवर योर प्रिंट हेलो वर्ल्ड सो ऑल दिस कोड आई एम टाइपिंग आई एम टाइपिंग इट माई ब्राउजर नाउ दिस कोड विल बी देन सेंड वेन आई एम क्लिकिंग ऑन दिस प्ले बटन ऑन द लेफ्ट हैंड साइड वेन आई एम क्लिकिंग ऑन दिस पर्टिकुलर प्ले बटन ऑन द लेफ्ट हैंड साइड दिस कोड इज देन सेंड टू द गूगल सर्वर्स ओके दिस कोड इज सेंड टू द गूगल सर्वर्स वेर इट यूटिलाइज द रिसोर्सेज ऑफ द सर्वर्स इट सेल्फ इट यूटिलाइज द रिसोर्सेज ऑफ द सर्वर्स इट सेल्फ एंड लाइक इट विल यूज द गूगल सी पी यू गूगल जी पी यू गूगल्स रैम टू रन दिस पर्टिकुलर लाइन ऑफ कोड देन वॉट एवर द रिजल्ट इज दैट रिजल्ट इज सेंड बैक टू अर्स दैट वी आर एबल टू सी ऑन आर स्क्रीन साइड ऑफ इश्यो that result is sent back to us and that result we are able to see on our screen so our computer's resources is not getting utilized and your laptop is always safe you don't want to lose a 60000 rupees or 1 lakh rupees uh, laptop at any point of time okay so that is the reason why i usually suggest students to go with google collab it's for free there are no charges you already get a 16 gb ram pre allocated for you guys okay so you don't have to worry about anything okay you just have to just open it up and start using it you can share this with everybody and they can also run this at the end of the day okay are you guys able to understand this please let me know are you guys able to understand this please let me know great guys amazing amazing so what we are going to do right now is let me open up github Modern concepts in Python. So as we are able to see for this boot camp, what I have done for you is I have already created notes for you guys. As we are able to see, I have already created notes for you guys that you can look forward to. They have some assignments as well. You can do that. You can understand everything from these notes itself. And this has been created to a very good degree. Okay, so this is the Python notebook that we are going to use. So let me just share this link with you guys. Okay, I'm sharing this link with you guys right now. Okay, so and I'm pinning this particular message up as well. Just as soon as this slows down a bit. As you're able to see, I pinned the message. Okay, I pinned the link for the notebook. okay i pinned the link for the notebook in the live chat that you will be able to see okay i pinned the notebook uh, in the live chat okay if you are going into the live chat this is the notebook just click on this particular link okay it will take you to the uh, python and machine learning uh, github notebook that is there right over here what you want to do is you want to copy this from right over here okay you want to copy this from right over here so just copy this from right over here okay just copy the link then search for google collab just search for google collab right over there and then search for google collab open up google collab okay open up google collab from google okay once you have opened it up again guys you don't have to code along with me just listen to me carefully because you need to understand the concepts right now if you're coding along with me you will not be able to understand concepts you will be skipping on what i'm saying and that won't be beneficial for you guys so whatever i'm saying just listen to it very carefully you don't have to do with this along with me this youtube video will be made available to you guys for a lifetime for your lifetime so you don't have to worry about it just listen to me very carefully and try to understand as much as possible so as soon as you are opening google collab right over here you are having examples recent google drive github upload what i want you to do is i want you to select github okay i want you to select github from right over here now again as you are able to see you just have to click on this particular link it will open up the notebook for you guys copy the url copy the url copy the website link copy the url go to google collaboratory select github right over here just remove everything from this search bar so you will have you will be able to see this search bar right over here paste the link that you have copied <clears throat> paste the link that you have copied right over here and then click on search okay and then click on search it will open that notebook for you guys inside of google collaboratory it will open the entire thing for you guys for on google collaboratory right over here okay then click on connect okay then click on connect so that you are able to get connected to the servers of google it will allocate you the resources and uh, you will be connected to google so just give give it a second so that you are able to do that okay so initializing 
and then it's connected so right now what we need to do is uh, so anyway most of you might be indians okay if you're not indians as well there is a ritual in india okay there's a ritual in india that we indians follow a lot okay uh, the ritual is before starting anything new or doing anything uh, good okay it's considered to be very auspicious to eat curd and sugar okay uh, it is very considered to be very auspicious to eat curd and sugar similar to that whenever you are starting any new programming language okay whenever you are starting any new programming language so that uh, you are able to do it by the print like you are able to do it by printing okay by writing hello world in that particular language okay you are able to do that by writing hello world in that particular language so again before starting python before starting python we will like to write hello world in this language that is in python itself we we'll like to write hello world in python okay to do that there is a function in python an inbuilt function in python that we have to utilize or as the print function you want to print something on your screen you want to write something on your screen so for that you will be using the print function itself okay for that you will be using the print function itself right over here you are having print and then hello world okay so whatever you want to print that is i want to print hello world okay i'll be writing it down inside the function called as print we will be learning about print right now but just to start this for an auspicious way we are writing this as print hello world once we have printed hello world now we can start off with learning python okay okay so let's start off with again the print function in python let's try to understand that so you will be seeing this print function very commonly in python and in other programming language as well it has its own uh, like every programming language has its own like print function okay in python this is called as the print function it helps us to uh, write something to our screen okay whatever we want to write something on our screen it helps us to do that now for example we are having 2 plus 7 right over here we are writing 2 plus 7 right over here now if i'm running 2 plus 7 you are able to see that okay 2 plus 7 is 9 and we are getting 9 over on our screen right over here we are getting 9 on our screen right over here now what if i'm writing 2 into 7 into the next line what if i'm writing 2 into 7 in on next line if i'm running this particular line of code i'm not getting 9 on my screen i'm just getting 14 i'm just getting 14 why is that the case so now what happens is python executes every single line of code line by line okay it executes every single line of code line by line okay so right over here if i'm coming to the first line of code you are having 2 plus 7 okay if i'm coming to the first line of code we are having 2 plus 7 right over here so python reads this particular line of code okay it's read this particular line of code it's like okay 2 plus 7 is 9 but you haven't told me what to do with this line if i'm python this is my thought process you haven't told me what i have to do with this particular line line nine okay i don't know what to do with that so i will be like okay so you haven't told me so just leave it let's move on to the next line of code so the next line of code is 2 into 7 so 2 into 7 is 14 then again you haven't told me what to do with this particular uh, like answer i don't know i'm having 14 on my screen i don't know what to do with this but this is the last line of code so why should i keep it in my hand i'll just put it up on the console i will just put it up as your output okay so hence 9 is getting lost you are not able to get 9 on your screen you are only able to get 14 because that is the last line of code that has been printed now if i want to print 9 as well on my screen i have to tell python i have to explicitly tell python to print it out on my screen i have to explicitly tell python to print it out for that you will be using the inbuilt function called as python whatever you want to print you have to put it into parentheses and then write python in front of it sorry print in front of the front of it okay so as soon as i have written paint 2 plus 7 so what is happening is python is doing 2 plus 7 9 and now you are telling python that okay print it out print this output out to our screen okay so let's run this particular line of code as you're able to see we are getting 9 and 14 both printed out on our screen but this is not the right way to do this okay 2 into 7 just leaving 2 into 7 thinking that this is the last line of code it will automatically come to 
our screen is not the right way if you want to into 7 to come up to your screen you should always use another print statement you will always use another print statement right over here and then execute this particular line of code and you will be able to see 9 and 14 coming up on our screen okay 9 and 14 coming up on our screen right over here and this is the usage of the print statement okay Okay, now let us try to understand the concept of variables in uh, Python. Now again, I will be taking everything from the at most basic guys. So don't worry about it because I understand that many of you are not from a computer science department. Many of you are not even from a BTEC department and we need to make sure that anyone who is coming up to these boot camps is able to understand every single thing. Okay, is able to understand every single thing. Okay, so right over here, we are going to learn about variables. Variables is another very important concept that you will be using in any programming language. Whether it be Python, Java, JavaScript, C, C Sharp, C++, Go, any programming language that you are using, you will be having variables inside of that. Okay, so let's try to understand variables guys. Let's try to understand variables first of all. Okay. So, um, Let's try to understand why variables are important. Okay, we will take up my classic example of the landlady. Okay, so you are having, uh, you are a software engineer. Okay, let's draw you guys up. You are a software engineer. Okay, you earn a lot. Currently, your salary is uh, 1 lakh rupees. Okay, 1 lakh rupees per month. That is your salary right now. So that is your salary. Okay, and you have recently shifted to Bangalore. Let's say that you have recently shifted to Bangalore right now. Now you want a house for rent. Of course, you would get a house for rent. So you approach the landlady. You approach the landlady saying that, okay, I want a house for rent. So uh, the landlady said, that, okay, so your rent is 25,000 rupees or let's say uh, 15,000 rupees. So your rent is 15K or 15,000 rupees right now per month. Okay. Now, of course, when you are a software engineer, you would want to have a car as well. You want to have, get a car. Okay, the EMI for that car, the EMI for that car right now is, let's say, um, 15,000 rupees again. The EMI of the car is 15,000 rupees right over here. Next thing that you are having is you have also joined a gym. Let's say that you have also joined a gym. So you are having the gym membership as, let's say, 5,000 rupees okay, per month. That is your gym membership, 5,000 rupees per month. And yes, you have to pay taxes as well. So tax is 30%. It taxes 30% for you guys. Now you are a programmer. Okay, you don't need to know programming for this example. Don't worry about it. I'm trying to give you an example that you guys will be able to relate and understand to in the very easy sense. Okay, don't worry about it. So you are like a programmer. You don't want to like every single month like just send 15,000 rupees to your landlord, uh, 15,000 rupees for your EMI, 5,000 rupees to your gym membership and then calculate all your taxes, what is your saving. You don't want to do all that. So what you have done is you have written 10,000 lines of code. You have written 10,000 lines of code that basically does all that work for you guys. Okay. 10,000 lines of code that you have written right over here that basically does all that work for you guys. It will pay the rent, it will pay the EMI, it will pay the gym membership, it will calculate the taxes for you, it will pay that taxes for you as well, it will calculate your savings, it will show you the savings as well. Okay, every single thing it will be able to do that for you. You have written 10,000 lines of code. Now in that particular code, for example, if you wanted to calculate your tax, how would you do that? Okay, if you wanted to calculate your tax, how would you do that? So the code for that would be something like, okay, so salary minus uh, your rent minus your EMI. So because that is tax deductible multiplied by, so th this won't look something like this. Your salary is 1 lakh. Okay, so it will be 1 lakh salary minus your rent that is 15,000 minus your EMI that is again 15,000. Okay, multiplied by 0 0.3. Okay, that will give you your tax that you have to pay. Okay, similarly, if you want to get your savings, if you want to get how much savings that you have, then you will have to write, okay, 10, 000, 1 lakh, that is your salary, minus, you will have your rent, okay, minus your EMI, okay, minus your gym membership. Then you will have like minus the taxes. So again, you will have to calculate your tax right over here. That will be 1 lakh minus 15,000. Minus 15,000. Okay. And uh, multiplied by 0 0.3. That is your taxes. So this is basically your taxes itself. Okay. This entire thing. 
right over here is nothing else but your taxes okay this is the entire thing is your tax itself that you will have to subtract and that will get you your uh, salary that will get you your savings okay that will get your savings but you will have to do this many a times throughout your 10,000 lines of code trying to calculate various different things you have to do this many a times trying to calculate various different things at the end of the day now what if your landlady your landlady comes to know that you are a programmer you are a software engineer and landlady knows that you earn a lot you earn a lot so she tells you that okay if you want to start living if you want to keep on living right over here in this house i'm increasing the rent to twenty five thousand. i'm increasing my rent to twenty five thousand right now okay you have to pay me twenty five thousand. now the house is great you don't want to relocate so what would you do you would start paying twenty five thousand to that landlady every single month but now once that rate has been increased from 15,000 to 25,000 you have to go back through your 10,000 lines of code and every single place wherever you have used rent to calculate something you have to change it from 15,000 you will have to change the code from 15,000 to 25,000 now many of you would be very smart many of you would be very smart that sir why we have to do that why we have to go line by line to change that we'll just do a control f and a control r that will, will find and replace all the 15,000 by 25,000 that's very easy i'll just find and replace all the 15,000 by 25,000 i'm very smart but guys please remember that your emi value is also 15,000 if you are doing something like that if you are doing something like that then you will be replacing all the emi values as well to 25,000 itself Okay, so you will have to replace the 50,000 by 25,000 itself and you don't want to do that at the end of the day. Okay, so what you have to do, you have to go to every single 15,000, try to think that okay, whether this is for rent or this is for EMI, try to analyze the code and then change it to 25,000. Now this is a very big problem. This is a very big problem. Okay, and this is where the concepts of variables come into place. Okay, so instead of doing the calculations like this, instead of writing everything, writing a code like this, what if if you're going out to give all these numbers some nicknames? What if you're giving all these numbers some nicknames? Okay, so for example, you're giving 1 lakh as a nickname of salary. You're giving 1 lakh a nickname of salary. You're giving 25,000 a nickname of rent. You're giving EMI a nickname of 15,000. You're giving gym a nickname to 5,000 rupees. You're giving tax a nickname to 0 0.3. Tax is equals to 0 0.3 right over here. Now you have, when you're again writing all that code, you will be writing something like this. So if you want to calculate tax, so tax, like whatever tax is equals to sal, minus rent minus emi multiplied by t that is your 0 0.3 multiplied by t similarly if you want to calculate your savings the so savings is equals to sal minus rent minus emi minus tax that will give you a savings now if the particular uh if that particular landlady coming in and increasing the value from 15,000 to 25,000, if that landlady is coming in right now and increasing the rent from 15,000 to 25,000, then you don't have to look at these 10,000 lines of code. You don't even have to look at these 10,000 lines of code. You just have to look at these nicknames. You just have to look at these nicknames and then just remove this 15,000 from right over here. You just have to remove this 15,000 from right over there and just increment that value to 25,000. Change that value to 25,000. So right now inside your entire 10,000 lines of code, wherever you have used the word rent, wherever you have used the nickname rent right over there, it, the value will refer to 25,000. That value will now refer to the new value that is 25,000. You don't even have to look at the 10,000 lines of code. And that nickname is basically a variable. That nickname is basically called as a variable. Are you guys able to understand this example please let me know that why this nicknames is better to use are you guys able to understand this example guys please do let me know
Are you guys able to understand this example? Please do let me know, guys. Guys, are you able to understand this example? Please let me know. Are you guys able to understand? Please let me know, guys. There are 3,000 of you. Are you able to understand this? Please let me know, guys. Great. Amazing. Now, just think about a variable. So, when you are writing rent, okay, when you are writing rent is equal to 15,000, okay, when you are writing rent is equal to 15,000, what is happening, okay, what you are doing is you are creating a box. You are creating a box called as rent. You are creating a box called as rent and it contains 15,000 inside of it. It contains the value 15,000 inside of it. Okay, this is what you are actually making. This is how you will be representing or thinking about variables. When you are writing rent is equal to 15,000, you are creating a box called as rent, which contains a coin, which contains a value inside of it called as 15,000. Now, if you are writing again rent is equal to 25,000, what you are doing right now is you are taking 15,000 out from the box. You are taking 15,000 out from the box okay you're taking 15,000 out from the box and you are putting 25,000 inside the box you're putting 25,000 inside the box now when you're using rent anywhere okay, whenever you're using rent that is the nickname of the box anyway that refers to the value 25,000 that it contains the value 25,000 that it contains inside of it okay it it refers to the value that is contained inside of it so let us look at this from a code perspective look at this from a code perspective so right over here you are having month is equals to 12 okay you are having month is equals to 12 right over here so you are having month as a variable name and 12 is the value associated with it when you are using print month so it will print the value that is contained inside the variable month it will print the value that is contained inside of the month itself okay so that is 12 so if i'm running this particular line of code as you're able to see we are getting 12 printed out on our screen we're getting 12 printed out on our screen right over here okay similarly if we are creating so for example right over here let's let's try to understand this okay let, i'm uh, what will happen guys let's Think about it. Think about it. What will happen if I'm running this particular line of code? A is equal to 3. A is equal to 3. B is equal to A. And A is equal to A plus 3. Okay, so write the value of... So in the live chat, guys, I want you guys to write the value of B comma A. What will be the value of B? So for example, if the value of B is 9 and the value of A is 5, then write 9 comma 5 inside the live chat. If I'm executing these three lines of code, what will be the value of B and A? Guys, please write it down in the live chat, guys. Okay? Guys, please write it down in the live chat, guys. What will be the value of B comma A, guys? Okay, okay. So some of you are writing uh, 3 comma 6. Some of you are writing 6 comma 6. Okay, okay, guys, please be very interactive with me. Please try to answer it appropriately enough. Okay. Some of you are writing 6 comma 3 as well. So there are a lot number of answers that you guys are giving. So let's try to understand it again. Whenever a question comes like this and you don't know what to do, try to build up the box model that I explained to you about the variables. So what is happening right over here is, first of all, A is equal to 3. So you're creating a box called as A and you're putting up the value 3 inside of it. Okay. Then you're writing B is equal to A. Then you're again creating a box B. Now what is happening right over here is when you're writing B is equal to A. So whenever A is on the left hand side, Okay, A is on the LHS. Okay, it refers to the box. Okay, it refers to the box itself. But whenever the value is A is on the right hand side. Okay, whenever you are using A on the right hand side, it refers to the value inside the box. It refers to the value inside the box. So when B is equal to A, that means we are not putting up the box B, box A inside of B. We are not putting the box A inside of B. What we are having is we are taking out 3 from here. We are creating a clone of this particular value. And we are putting this clone inside of your b 
सो वी आर जस्ट पुटिंग अप दी वैल्यू थ्री एंड दिस इज अ टोटली डिफरेंट थ्री द टोटली डिफरेंट थ्री राइट ओवर हिस्सर वी आर डूइंग एज गो ए प्लस थ्री यू आर अगेन टेकिंग आउट थ्री फ्रॉम राइट ओवर हियो यू आर एडिंग थ्री टू एट द वैल्यू सिक्स यू देन पुटिंग दैट इन साइड सो नाउ द वैल्यू दैट इज प्रेजेंट इन साइड ऑफ ए इज सिक्स सो वैल्यू ऑफ बी इज थ्री एंड द वैल्यू ऑफ ए इज सिक्स सो थ्री कॉमा सिक्स वुड बी द राइट आंसर राइट ओवर देर ओके ओके सो फॉर एग्जाम्पल ए इज गुज टू थ्री बी इज गुज टू ए सो बी वोट प्रिंट थ्री सो बी वोट प्रिंट ए बी वुड प्रिंट थ्री राइट ओवर देर सो एम रनिंग दिस पर्टिकुलर लाइन ऑफ कोड एज यूर एबल टू सी वी आर गेटिंग थ्री ऑन आवर स्क्रीन ओके नाउ वॉट हैपन्स वी डोंट डिक्लेयर द वे वैल वॉट हैपन्स वी आर नॉट डिक्लेयरिंग द वेरिएबल राइट ओवर यूर वी आर डिक्लेयरिंग सो ए इज गुज टू थ्री वी आर टेलिंग बाई दिन दैट This a basically means the value three. We are telling Python that b is equal to a. That this b is equal to the value contained inside of a. That is three. So we are telling Python. What if we are not telling Python anything? So for example, x. We don't know what x is. Python does not know what x is. So I am running this particular line of code. You are able to see that I am getting a name error. I am getting name x is not defined. Every single day the classes would be for one to one and a half hours. Okay, so that we are able to cover as much as possible and as easily as possible as well. So the classes would be for one to one and a half hours, guys. Okay, so we are getting an error right over here. Name error. Name x is not defined. That is Python is basically telling us that, dude, what is this x? I don't know. Tell me. So you have to declare that. To declare that, you have to write x is equal to some value. X is equal to some value. Then it will execute that line of code. Then it would execute that line of code. Okay. Okay. Now multiple assignment operator. Now just to make sure that you are able to understand one of the things why we use Python in our daily lives. As you are able to see Python as a language, it looks like normal English itself. X is equal to twelve. Like we are able to understand immediately what that means. Print x. We are able to understand it. Print x. So if something will be printed on our screen, so we are able to understand it immediately. So Python is very similar to the English language, and it is very easy to read, understand, and as a beginner language, it is very easy to do as well. Okay. The second particular thing is Python helps to minimize the amount of code that you have to write to do something. Python also helps to minimize the amount of code that you have to like write to do something. So one of the things that is For example, right over here is height is equal to three, length is equal to six, width is equal to two. Right over here, so we are creating three different variables and assigning them some values. Now we are calculating volume. Okay, we are calculating volume right over here. That is height multiplied by length multiplied by width. That is volume would be thirty six. So I am running this particular line of code. You are able to see that the volume is thirty six right over here. But I don't want to write these three lines of code. I don't want to write three lines of code. So Python has something called as multiple variable assignment operator. Okay, multiple variable or multiple assignment operator as well. Okay, so what it does it? It will do the exact same thing for you in just one line of code. So you can just write height, comma length. Comma W I D T H width is equals to six comma three comma two. So what is happening right over here is the value six is getting assigned to height. The value three is getting assigned to length, and the value two is getting assigned to width. Okay, automatically. So instead of writing three lines of code, you are able to condense it into a single line of code itself. That is one of the features of Python. It is able to condense the amount of code that you have to write. Now, height contains the value of six, length as three, width as two. So if you are running this particular line of code, you will still get the same answer. That is thirty-six. You are able to get the same answer. That is thirty-six. And this is what you want at the end of the day as. Well, okay. So now this concept is something called as tuples. We will be learning about tuples in tomorrow's class, so don't worry about it. Okay. But this concept is something that you need to understand that Python helps you to condense the number of lines of code that you have to write. Okay. Great. Now, when you are creating variables, when you are creating variables, there are some naming conventions that you need to follow as well. 
okay you need to uh, like there are some naming conventions that you need to follow some rules and regulations that you need to follow to name a variable okay when you are using rent or x or a or b so all those were names of a variable itself so those rules are as below okay there are six rules that you need to follow the first rule is that you should start a variable name with an alphabet or an underscore character so you can start a variable name the first rule that you are having that is rule one the first rule that you are having is any variable name the first letter of that variable name what is the variable name is the first letter of the variable name can be a small a to z capital a to z and an underscore nothing else nothing else the first letter can be small a to z capital a to z or an underscore nothing else okay the second rule basically says that a variable name can only contain capital a to z small a to z zero to nine and an underscore so for the rest of the variable name okay the first letter can be small a to z capital a to z or an underscore now the next for the rest of the variable name okay the answer can only be small a to z capital a to z underscore and zero to nine so it can not start it cannot start with a number but it can contain a number as well okay it can contain a number as well okay okay next the third rule is you cannot start a variable name with a number like we have seen right now we cannot start a variable name with a number it can contain a number so 007 james bond is not a valid variable name but james bond 007 is a valid variable name guys okay okay the next thing is you cannot use the special characters with the variable names such as dollar percent uh, hash ampersand at a rate hyphen or carrot okay you cannot use special characters along with variable name guys you cannot use special characters along with variable names so the variable names cannot contain the variable name the entire variable name cannot contain any kind of special uh, character except underscore except underscore any type of special character it cannot contain okay the next rule that we are having is variable names are case sensitive okay variable names are case sensitive that means that if you are having str capital str small str then you are having str then you are having s t r or all these will be considered as different variable names because python is a case sensitive language okay python is a case sensitive language so for that reason all these will be considered as different variable names guys okay the last rule is that we cannot use reserved keywords as variable names you cannot use print as a variable name you cannot use for as a variable name def as a variable name del as a variable name because these have some these val these words like print already have some um, like value inside of uh, python they have some importance inside of python itself that is the reason you cannot use these reserved keywords as variable name you cannot use these reserved keywords as variable name guys okay so now you will see that so but we don't know what are the reserved keywords in python you don't need to know for example if i'm writing for right over here if i'm writing something like for it already highlights that for me you're able to see that for is highlighted so it's a reserved keyword in python and again with practice as you are practicing python as you are learning more about python as you are doing programs in python you will be able to know a lot many number of reserved keywords in python so again you cannot use reserved keywords in python okay these are some of the examples of allowed variable names okay you are having x y my python my underscore python underscore my underscore python so all these are reserved like all these are allowed variable names you will have no issues using these variable names right over here 
okay now the variable names that are not allowed as you are able to see this particular variable name is starting with a 7 you cannot start a variable name with a number you cannot contain a hyphen that is a special character you cannot contain hyphen within the variable name okay you cannot contain iterate okay that is again a special character okay you you cannot contain a special character inside a variable name you cannot have a space inside a variable name guys you cannot have a space inside the variable name and you cannot use a reserved keyword as a variable name if you are running this particular line of code you will be able to see that we are getting a syntax error saying invalid syntax okay now what is syntax okay in python or in programming in general what is syntax okay you need to understand uh, so for example in english we are having grammar in english you are having grammar so similarly in uh, programming you have syntax okay if you're not following syntax you will get errors okay if you're not following the grammar of python if you're not following the grammar of python you will get errors and that is what syntax is like how to write the code what is the exact spelling of the code how should you write the code all that grammatical things is basically what syntax means okay Okay, again, I don't care if you guys are here saying that sir, one hour is enough or not, because I know that it is not enough. We need to learn a lot. We need to learn Python. We need to learn Pandas. We need to learn Matplotlib, Seaborn. We need to do a project as well in just seven days. Okay, and if it is not getting completed, then you will guys say that, okay, nothing has been taught in the bootcamp. So I don't care about that. Okay, so every class would be almost one and a half hours long and we will be studying as much as possible guys. Okay, great. So those who are loving the sessions who are here to learn again, a lot of love to you guys and those who are here just for the attendance. Uh, guys, at the end of the day, I will be asking questions. There will be some questions in the attendance link as well uh, on the seventh day. And if you're not able to answer those questions, you will in fact not get the certificates. So don't waste your time okay if you are here to learn your certificates only have value if you have the right knowledge if you don't have the right knowledge along with those certificates the if you're showing those certificates to the interviewers and the interviewers will be like okay so you have learned python okay tell me the six rules of naming a variable in python if you're not able to tell that that your certificate is fake you're lying on your resume nobody will be hiring you after that they'll consider that yeah you are a big liar you you have forged this certificate right over here okay so knowledge is important along with the certificates okay certificate is also important but knowledge is also important so if you're not here for the knowledge guys don't worry don't waste your time just go and watch some netflix show okay that is for you guys <laughs> you want entertainment go there and watch some netflix show <laughs> okay let's continue from right over here now once you've understood rules okay now if you're not following a rule okay in uh currently when you're having this particular uh uh in your daily life as well if you're not following a particular rule then you will get penalty you will be thrown into jail or you will be fined something okay but there are some conventions as well so for example a human being who is currently going to a good uh restaurant should be eating with fork and uh spoon or with fork and knife or something like that he shouldn't be like eating directly like a dog uh, from the plate itself you shouldn't be licking the plate okay after finishing your food you shouldn't lick the plate itself so that is a convention although if you are licking the plate nobody is going to send you to jail okay nobody is going to send you to jail if you are licking the plate as well nobody is going to send you to jail but that is a convention that you will be considered as not a human being because you are licking up the plate itself okay so these are there are some conventions okay so sorry there are some conventions that are there in programming as well in python programming that have been set up by the community of developers who are currently like the python developers all around the world now these conventions if you're not following these conventions or you will not get an error you will not get a syntax error at the end of the day but if you're not following these conventions then you would be considered as a poor developer okay you will be considered as a poor developer guys Okay, so for that reason, let's try to understand what these, some of these conventions are. Okay, so are you guys able to understand what is the meaning of a convention? If you're not following a convention, you will not get an error, but you will be considered as a poor Python developer. Okay, because the entire Python developing society has like come together to build this entire uh, like convention. So you need to follow these conventions as well. Okay.
So right over here, as you're able to see, the first convention is try to keep the name of the variable descriptive but short. Okay, you need to keep the name of the variable that you're creating descriptive, okay, but short as well. For example, if you're taking the input for the height of a tree, okay, if you're taking up the input of height of a tree, then what should be the variable name for that? What should be the variable name for that? Okay, so your variable name cannot be just X or H because it's too short. There's no description. I'm not able to understand. If I'm using a variable name like X or H. I'm not able to understand what that means. Okay, it's short. I agree with that. But there's no description to this. I even cannot use something like height underscore of underscore the underscore tree. This is descriptive, but it is very long. Okay, it's not short. It's descriptive, but it's not short. It's very long right over here. Okay, so for that reason, you will be using a variable name like height. Okay, you are able to understand that, okay, we are taking up the height of an object right over here and it is short as well as descriptive as well. It is short as well as descriptive. Now, this is a particular convention that you have to decide using your own brain. Okay, so what will be better? Maybe height underscore tree would be better. Maybe just height would be better. Okay, so all that you have to understand on your own at the end of the day. Okay. So that is something that you need to understand as the first convention. The variable name should be descriptive, but short okay now the other thing is also the pythonic way to name the variables is to use all lowercase letters and underscores to separate the word this is called as the snake case okay this is called as the snake case guys okay so this is the pythonic way of naming a variable my underscore height everything is in small letters and the words are separated by underscores my underscore lat my underscore long so all these are pythonic way of naming a variable similar to that a non pythonic way of naming a variable is for example using all caps or using my as cap and then l as cap and then attaching them together so this is although this will work okay of course this first one won't work so let's remove this okay although these both will work you will not get an error but it's not the pythonic way of writing the variable name the right way to write that would be my underscore lat all in small and in caps okay all in small letters and separated by underscore my underscore lat that would be the all in small letters and separated by underscores and this is called as snake case okay this is called as snake case guys okay it's an uh, cac okay Okay, so next that we need to learn about is, for example, right over here, I'm writing rent is equals to 1700. Okay, rent is equals to 1700. Now I'm writing rent is equals to 2000 after that. So what is happening right over here is, first of all, we had the box inside the box. We had 1700 put up inside right over there. We are taking 1700 outside and then replacing it by 2000. Now that 1700 is lost to us. We cannot regain it back. Okay, that 1700 that we removed from the box is now lost to us. We cannot regain it back. And this is called as overwriting the variable. This is so you need to remember these technical terms as well. This is called as overwriting the variables. If I'm running this little line of code, I'm getting 2000 and I can never get the 1700 back. And this process is called as overwriting the variable. When a new value is assigned to a variable, the old one is forgotten. And that is basically overwriting the variable itself. Okay. Now, for example, if you were like you were having a crazy house party, okay, you're having a crazy house party and you damage some of the property where you were having the uh, like house party itself. So now the owner has charged you a fine of 700 rupees. So first your rent was 1700. Now your rent has been increased to 2000. On top of that, you are having a fine of 700 that you have to pay. So you can increase the value of rent by 700 by writing rent. So when you are having rent on the left hand side, that is the box. Okay, when the rent that is a variable is on the left hand side that refers to the box itself okay then on the right hand side you are having rent that is like on the right hand side when you are having rent it refers to the value that it contains the value present inside of rent is 2000 so this will be replaced by 2000 you will be adding 2000 to 700 and then 2700 will be assigned to the rent box the rent box will get 2700 inside of it okay so that will be the entire process so i'm running this particular line of code as you are able to see we are getting 2700 being printed on our screen we're getting 2700 being printed on our screen but 
again this can be also written as plus is equals to 700 okay the same thing we can write it as rent plus is equals to 700 that is increase the value of rent increase the value of rent by 700 rupees okay increase so this is what is called as increment operator we're writing in increase the value of rent by 700 rupees so if i am running this particular line of code as you're able to see we are getting the same answer that is 2700 we are getting the same answer that is 2700 now we can also do minus is equals to 700 so 2000 minus 700 that is 1300 okay you can do multiplied equal to 700 that is 2000 into 700 we can do rent divided by 700 so you will get uh, 2.85 as your answer okay so as you are able to see you can do plus is equals to multiplied equal to divide equal to minus equal to using these operators right over there okay are you guys able to understand this please let me know are you guys able to understand this please let me know guys guys able to understand this please let me know great okay so now we'll be type uh, starting off with data types in python okay now as you're able to see there are various kind of data that you were able to see inside of python itself so you saw some of the numbers okay you saw some of the numbers right over here like 2000 1700 then you saw some of the numbers that weren't quite whole numbers like decimal point numbers as well you also saw some text okay you also saw some of the text that you are able to see so there are different kinds of data that is present in python and each of this data has its own type as well now we are going to start off with understanding integers and floats okay we are going to start off with understanding the type integers and floats inside of python okay so far the numbers that we have dealt with are mostly whole numbers like 200 400 1500 all these kind of numbers but you must have noticed that there are some other kind of numbers that do exist for example 3.14 that is not quite a whole number that is a decimal number itself so for example if i'm dividing an integer by an integer if i'm dividing 3 divided by 2 i'm getting a number that is not quite an integer we are getting 1.5 okay we are getting 1.5 numbers with a decimal point such as 3.14 or 5.1 or 1.5 are called as floating point numbers or floats okay these are called as floating point numbers or floats okay note that although 42 although 42 is an integer okay note that 42 is an integer but 42.0 would be a floating point number so integers basically do not have any decimal points whereas floats will have a decimal point as well so there are the two data types that we are going to discuss right now okay one of the things that you need to understand is another inbuilt function so for example print was an inbuilt function in python that was used to print a particular thing on our screen okay another uh, object another inbuilt function in python is type type basically provides the object the type of the object that you want to check for example uh, you want to check what is the type of a what is the data type of a so the data type of a is goes to three so data type of a is integer what is the type of b what is the data type of b b is an uh, float itself so the type of b would be a float so if i'm running this particular line of code as you are able to see we are getting class int and class float as our answer you're getting class int and class float as our answer right over here are you guys able to understand this please let me know are you guys able to understand this please let me know are you guys able to understand and type type is basically another inbuilt function in python that basically prints out that basically provides you with the type of the object that you specify okay that is the type of the object type of a type of b okay that is integer type of a is int that is a short form for integer and type of b is float that is a short form for floating point number okay great guys amazing amazing okay so for example what if, if i want to convert an integer to a float or a float to an integer if i'm having an integer number i want to convert into a float 
I want to have a floating point number. I want to convert into an integer. How to do that? For that as well, you have inbuilt functions in Python that you can use. For example, three is an integer. Three is an integer right over here. You want it to be converted to float. So you just have to write float in front of it. You just have to write float in front of it. Okay. So that will convert three. That is an integer to float. Okay, that will convert 3 to as an integer to float. Now that will give you the answer. So if you are converting an integer to a float, it will give you an answer as 3.0. Any type of integer that you are having, when it is converted to float, it just adds 0 0.0 at the end. It just adds 0 0.0 at the end. Similarly, if you are having an integer, we are having a float that you want to convert to an integer 328.9 okay that is a floating point number if you want it to be get converted to an integer that is int okay so you have to just write int in front of it and then that would be equal to 28 so no matter if it is 28.1 or 28.2 or 28.5 or 28.9 anything that will be truncated and put up to 28 itself if you are converting into an integer everything after the decimal point will be removed everything after the decimal point will be removed so if you are converting the integer to float and float to an integer as you are able to see the answer that you are able to get is 3.0 and 28 you are able to get the answer as 3.0 and 28 are you guys able to understand this please let me know guys are you guys able to understand this please let me know guys Amazing, amazing guys, amazing. So we'll keep it up till here itself. We'll uh, continue from here, from tomorrow as well. Okay, right now I will be telling you guys about the certificate criteria, how we are going to take up the attendance and what will be the criteria and everything. Okay, whatever the questions are right over there. Okay, so there are three certificates that are there. One is a certificate by DevTown. The other one is a certificate by Google. And the third is the certificate by Microsoft. Okay, now there are no costs associated with the certificates. All these certificates are for free. The entire bootcamp is of free for as well. Okay, the only thing that we expect from you guys is your support. That's it. Okay, so now what we want to do is uh, those people. So every single day your attendance will be taking. We will be taking up your attendance every single day live in the class. And you will have to give your attendance live in the class itself. Once you have given up the attendance, you will have to up till 12 midnight to give your attendance. You will have to up till 12 midnight every single day to give your attendance. Those students who will have 100% attendance, that is 7 days of attendance itself, they will be getting the certificates via DevTown. Okay. They will be getting the certificates via DevTown. Okay. The people, so at the end of the uh, bootcamp, at the end of the bootcamp, we'll be having a project that we'll be doing. We'll be asking you to submit the project as well. How to submit the project, when to submit the project, all that I will be letting you guys know on the last day of the bootcamp. Not right now, on the last day of the bootcamp. So those students who will be having seven days of attendance, that is 100% attendance, as well as the correct project submitted. Those guys will be getting the certificates via Google as well as Microsoft. Okay, those guys will be getting the certificates via Google as well as Microsoft. Okay, so that is the thing. Now, coming back to the attendance itself, every single th day I'll be showing you a QR code. Okay, every single day I'll be showing you a QR code anywhere in the middle of the class. Right now, I'll be showing you for a very long period of time, but anywhere in the middle of the class, I will be giving like one or two seconds and I'll just show the QR code. Again, I need to remind you guys that this is a YouTube video. This is a YouTube video. What is this, guys? What is this? This is a YouTube video. You can pause the video. You can scroll it back. It will be made available to you guys for your lifetime if you're going on DevTown's uh, channel. Okay. I'm going on DevTowns, no, not forms. I'm going to open YouTube. If you are going to our channel right over here. Uh, oh, we reached 1.5k, 1.5 so lakh subscribers. Amazing. <laughs> so as you're able to see right over here, all the videos, all the bootcamp videos are right over here itself. You are able to see every single video is made available to you guys. Even two months ago, even four months ago, even like before that as well. Like we have six months ago as well. So all the things are made available to you guys right over here. 
okay so please try to understand that okay so it will always be made available to you guys on the youtube channel you can take up any of the class you can just scroll it back okay so whenever i am just like showing you the uh, video okay whenever i am just showing you the video you have to pause it okay you have to just take down the note of the time okay so i showed you the video at 1621 let's say that that is the time 16 minutes and 21 seconds just note down the time uh, time for that that particular time after the class is over don't fill up at that particular point of time if you're filling it up at that particular point of time you will not be getting the attendance i'm telling you guys after the class only you have to fill up the attendance once the class is over once you have attended the entire class immediately after the class itself you have taken down the time you have to go back right over there scan the qr code open up the google form fill the google form up and right over there you will be able to get your attendance for that day every single day the attendance link would be different every single day the attendance link would be different guys are you guys able to understand this please let me know are you guys able to understand this please let me know guys and that will be considered and now when you are filling up your attendance form please take a note of that that the attendance form like the, all the 7 days please use the same email id okay please use the same email id to fill up the attendance form on all the 7 days your certificate will be sent to you on that email id itself okay how to scan a qr code guys if you don't know how to scan a qr code you really 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 don't need to come into computer science okay you can use a google lens you can use a qr code scanner app from android or ios whatever you want to if you have a ios phone you can directly use the camera it will scan it for you okay so anything that you want to use you have to scan the qr code for the same okay okay so up till the point that i am uh, creating the attendance link for today i am hiding my display for right now as you are able to see i am still there on the screen i am still there on the screen you are able to listen to me properly i know it's black around me i know it's black around me don't need to tell me that okay so i will be uh, telling you guys about uh, devtown so devtown is a non profit organization that we had made last year itself we have trained over 5000 students up till this period point of time and we focus upon getting students placed so that is our only concern okay we conduct these free boot camps in partnership with various different companies and we try to bring as much as possible for you guys as well okay so whatever your suggestions is whatever your feedbacks is do let us know that so that we are able to implement it on it as well and be able to provide you guys with something that you want okay so that is what we aim forward to as well okay so there will be a lot um, many number of things that uh, we do okay uh, these boot camps we have on cyber security we have boot camps on uh, web development we have boot camps on data science we have boot camps on blockchain other technologies we bring in a uh, people from the industry we have some interviews and everything so that you guys are also able to understand as much as possible from there okay so all these different things are something that we try our best to do okay and um, the only thing that we want from you guys is your support okay that's it that's the only thing that we want from you guys okay that is your support at the end of the day why i am saying that is because see it's very difficult to get google or microsoft for example we are right now in talks with postman and amazon as well to be able to provide you with more certificates but we are only able to do that if and only if these companies are able to see that the community is continuously growing okay these uh, students are supporting us and they are gaining some knowledge out of these uh, boot camps and these programs that we are doing so the only thing that we ask from you guys is your love and your support that said okay just help us out like the video subscribe to the channel that is the only thing that we are asking for you guys and of course come to the boot camps and learn as much as possible whatever i'm teaching to you guys go back after this boot camp practice because see you need to understand that all these different things that we are currently doing if you're not practicing it there is there is no no uh use of coming to these boot camps okay there is no use at all to come to this boot camps okay you can just go and watch some video or like maybe some anime like uh, spy x family love that anime man so 
like you can go and watch that if you need some anime suggestions i'm definitely the guy any movie any tv series any anime suggestions i'll definitely help you help you our guys out with that as well you don't have to worry about it now like coming to this boot camp you should have one track mind that i'm here to learn and grow that is the reason why i'm coming to these boot camps okay we have internships we have paid internships we have normal internships as well we have a lot many number of things that we offer to you guys the only thing that we have okay boot camps and everything that we are able to have we even if we are trying to do something we are charging something then we do that at cost okay whatever the instructors are charging us we are trying to do that but these boot camps we try to completely for free we never charge anything for these boot camps we have conducted almost 500 boot camps up till this particular point of time 500 boot camps so you are able to understand and we have taught almost uh 3.5 million students up to this point of time so you are able to understand that we are very much involved with what we are doing right over here okay the only thing that we want from you guys is if it's possible if you find it in your hearts do like the video and subscribe to the channel because when these companies see that yes the students are actually like uh like devoting to the community itself okay they are trying to help the community out that means they are gaining something out of it and at the end of the day that helps you guys okay because uh you guys are able to get the more number of certificates as well okay okay uh so right now as you are like almost 3000 people live with us i will definitely like just want you guys that if it's possible please do like the videos it really 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 helps us a lot okay it really helps us a lot okay okay guys are you able to see my screen right now are you guys able to see this particular screen right now okay so this is a qr code for today's attendance okay right away you can take up the like and you can scan this okay there will be no issues you can pause the video as well as i said this is a youtube video so you don't have to like keep on watching the qr code you can pause the video you can roll it back you can watch the qr code once again okay those who want to connect with me personally they can connect with me on linkedin or instagram Okay, you can just search for my name. My name is Shoresh Sinha. Okay, I've been a software engineer, a full stack engineer, a data scientist, as well as a data analyst at companies like Reliance, Jio, Fastnet, and many other companies as well. You can definitely connect with me on LinkedIn or else on Instagram as well. You can also connect with Dev Town on Instagram. Okay, the links for that is down in the description of the video. You can definitely connect with us on uh, Instagram as well. as we are able to see this is our instagram profile every single day every single day we post some information for you guys on instagram that you can go and just like read through it every single day you will be able to gain some new information about a particular topic okay so we are putting it up in bits and pieces and everything would be very 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 easy for you to understand okay we are trying to make sure that it's as simple and as easy for you guys to understand these concepts and we try to make it a bit fun as well from a very long period of time we haven't posted some memes but we try our best to keep it light and breezy by posting some memes as well i will definitely try to post some memes as well okay so for example like anaconda and uh, so that is the anaconda that programmers like so all these type of memes we try our best that we are able to keep the entire thing uh like as simple as possible and as entertained and as interactive as possible with you guys so this is one of the memes that i like the most that the server has crashed where is the backup so you are having on the server itself so these are things we'll try our best so that we are able to give as much as possible to you guys we also want a lot of feedback from you guys okay so what are the changes that you want to see what are the things that you want to see in the boot camps or on in the instagram or on linkedin so we will be able to help you guys as well Okay, so that is our aim right over here. Okay, again, like I said, this is a YouTube video. For those who weren't able to see the uh, QR code for the attendance link, guys, this is a YouTube video. You can pause this video. You can scroll it back and watch it once again. Okay, you can pause this video, scroll it back and watch it once again, guys. Okay. uh the link for the insta and the linkedin profile rahul is down in the description of the video itself you will be able to find it from right over there okay 
लाइक ए सेट दिस इज यूट्यूब वीडियो गाइज आई हैोन दी क्यू आर कोड फॉर अटेंडेंस येस दो आर लाइक डन विद द बूट कैम कैन लीव राइट नाउ विल बी एंडिंग दिस बूट कैम राइट नाउ बट डू बिफोर लीविंग दैट प्लीज डू लाइक द वीडियो इट रियली हेल्प अस अलॉट ओके Yes, I know there are two accounts with uh, the LinkedIn uh, with my name. Just follow the one with more number of followers. <laughs> What can I say? <laughs> okay, yeah. Uh, uh, Animesh uh, Tiwari, like I've shown you, this is the uh, like notes that I've already created for you guys. Okay, the link is right over here, as you're able to see in the live chat. I pinned up the link for the notes as well. Okay, I pinned up the links for the notes as well. Okay. Uh, my name is Shorya Sinha, guys. Okay. <laughs> Thank you so much, guys. So it was amazing meeting you guys to be able to talk to you, to be able to meet you, and uh, have this boot camp interactive session with you guys as well. So, uh, uh, Akash, we have already started with Python. <laughs> okay. Sure, those who want to create their own notes, I will definitely suggest that you should be creating your own notes as well. My name is Shorya S H A U R Y A. No, I'm not Gujarati. It's not S H O. It's S H A. Okay. Uh, yeah. So it was great meeting you guys. Again, we'll be meeting tomorrow at the same time. That is eight o'clock. Please be on time. We will be continuing with our Python. We will be moving towards strings. We will be moving towards string methods, lists, tuples, and dictionaries. That is what we'll be doing tomorrow. So it will be great, guys. We will be able to do a lot of different things in the next seven days. And I hope that you guys will be joining us every single day, learning and practicing whatever you have learned on that particular day. Again, guys, please do practice. Practice is the key to success, especially in programming. Okay, practice is the key to success, especially in programming, guys. Okay, okay. So it was great meeting you guys. I hope to see you guys tomorrow as well, <clears throat> and uh, we'll have a blast. Thank you so much, guys. Thank you. Thank you.